As an older expat, should you get married? Um, it's a strange question, but it, somebody brought it up. It's, it's a yin and yang type thing, because I know some guys have took their partner back to the US. Um, not many to the UK, so I can't talk from that point. Not, not to ours or anywhere else. It's, it's mainly been people taking women back to the US, so I can't talk from other countries. Um, but they took their partners back because they know they're already um, one foot in the grave sort of thing and they thought right well we've been happily married because they, they haven't moved like overnight they, they've been in the Philippines for several years um, but they then got into the relationship thing had kids etc etc so then when they had originally arrived their, their focus was on retirement meet a nice girl, stay here. They didn't think about family, they didn't think about um, what they were going to do after, you know, to make sure that their partner and that was taken care of. But while they've been there, life has taken over. So as such, they have then thought, right, well, I want to make sure the kids go to school properly. I want to make sure that they're not going to be penniless because as soon as I leave, the family got to move in and they're going to be trying to get hold of any of the assets that are there. Um, there's been lots of different reasons of why they've gone back to the West. In those relationships, it's much easier to move if you're married. Um, now, if you're staying in the Philippines long term and couldn't care less about any of those issues, then there is no advantage for you getting married. Um, you're not going to be able to own land. You're not going to be able to... Um, yeah. I can't think of any. <laughs> the only thing is the 13A, the resident visa. Beyond that, anything's negotiable. <laughs> um, for example, this is why I say for a lot of people to buy, uh, rent rather than buy when they first move. And if you're on a regular good income, then I would say just keep renting. And the reason being is you fell out with your partner, you can move out. You know, even if, you know, because when I say this, there's some scenarios people have had with their absolute nightmare wives or girlfriends. They could simply just go and walk away, you know, move out. Um, get on a flight to Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, wherever, um, if they got in a situation that was so bad. But where people get locked into it is when they've sold their properties and stuff overseas and then gone and bought a house in the Philippines. You know, well, I'm going to be all right here for the next 15, 20 years till I die. Um, and I'll be like, that's what people say to me. It's not me saying this about them. That's what they say to me. They could, because they're only thinking about a maximum of 20 years before they pop the clocks. So they're only thinking, right, there we go. There's our house. I'm going to go in there. Got my pension. Everything's great. And then the husband's got boyfriends. And then you find out the she's not really your wife or your girlfriend because she's already married um, all these other things that go on in the background that you only find out over a period of time um, in those situations it wouldn't be worth getting married um, myself if I was in that situation I simply wouldn't buy a house um, the house you have overseas will bring in more revenue than it will in the Philippines. You're better off just renting the thing out. Um, simple as that. It also gains in value a lot more. The Philippines is a place for retirement, but it can also go horribly wrong quite quickly if something starts to cause the domino effect or the ripple effect, where one thing leads to another and another and another. You know. Um, I'm trying to think who it was. There was somebody that employed their brother, brother-in-law, um, but later found out it was the boyfriend of the wife. But those things happen. You know, it, I was talking to somebody about this before in the UK because he came to meet me. Um, he had quite a bad thing happen to him while he was in the Philippines and. One of the things he said when we met is he wanted to talk to me because when he talks to anybody else, they're just like, well, this is crazy, this wouldn't happen. But if you talk to people that live in the Philippines, 
a long period of time, just ask them, you know, you don't have to name names or whatever, but just ask them what's the worst things you've seen happen to people. And you'll struggle to find any that say, no, everything's great, because things happen to people all the time. They may not all be interconnected. Not all. It's not like uh, watching one of these uh, TV shows where the population of 400 in a village and there's a murder every week. It's more of a case of the expat community is quite broad but still interwoven. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't on the internet, but they know people on the internet. So everyone's interconnected. But yeah, so in that case, you, if you're a, I'm an older generation, unless you actually want to get married for a specific reason, um, I wouldn't say you have to or need to. Um, it's more to do with your commitment to your partner. It, it's, yeah, you know, for me, it's a commitment to my wife. That's it. You know, but obviously the age gap between my, me and my wife is only six years. Um, but the the thing is, I know when somebody is like twenty six and the guy's sixty eight, um, there's a big gap there. So should they get married? I think it's up to them. You know, it's really up to them. But I think, like everything, you just got to sit there and weigh up the options. But I would still keep money, uh, money and property offshore. Um, simple as that. Thanks for watching.